can be really complex sometimes. But anyway, the question I want to ask you, Mr. Ugo, is what are the solutions? Because we are going to have to rebuild ourselves. I believe that the human being is really sophisticated as an animal in that he is able to rebuild. So I believe in that aspect of your coaching, even though I haven't really understand the details of it, that reauthoring of identity, that we can really recreate something. So looking at Africa as it were, as a group of people, how can we rebuild our identity? Because at least we are still alive. Many of us are still living in Africa, even though we are POW, I want to call us prisoners of war to the European. They do what they like, subliminally in most of the cases. How can we recover ourselves? What are the strategies? Please help me with this. Okay, thank you so much for that question. And uh, so because um, and that's because it's at the core of what I've made actually my mission, especially here in Africa. Um, helping the Africans to actually recreate their own identity, to, to author their own identity. And because that was actually what I did on my own. That's Christian, every other thing that I knew, my culture, my religion, everything. I had to question from the beginning to really understand who I am. So it starts at the very basic level. Who am I? Why am I here? Start at a very basic level to understand the self. Understanding the self. When we talk about the self, usually people usually think that the self is uh, my name is Ugochuku, and I am from Imo State, Nigeria, and then um, I do this, I do this, or they attach their self with their work, their careers, and any other thing that they're doing. No, but those are the actually the extensions of yourself. The things that yourself is using to manifest itself in the world. But at the very core level, what are the sources that have come together to create your sense of self? Part of the research that we are doing at my company, Next Earth, is an investigation into the memories that come to create individuals. So we go back into thousands and millions of years back to tap into the ancestral memories that actually come to create people's identity, people who they are on the genetic level. But successes in this area, you know, we're still into the future. So whilst we are still developing the tools and the technologies to really arrive at this, we're starting from a very basic level. How do we solve this? The African has to understand that Yes, your identity has been robbed of you. What I usually tell people is, if you are born poor, or if you are born in an environment, and then you find out that there's certain that you're lacking, it's not your fault that you're lacking that. Thing. It's not my fault that when I became conscious, I found out that my name that my parents gave me was Augustus. The baptismal was Augustus. But when I became conscious of it, and I understood that wrapped with that name was an identity I could not align with. Identity that was not aligned with who I am. I had to change it and bring it back to my own local name. So it is to my own local name, which is Gochuku, which, which I could identify with, and which actually speaks to me at a very core level. It is from there that I can start creating who I am. So it is not your fault that what has happened in the past is not your fault, but it's your fault once you become aware of your condition. So awareness confers responsibility. So the process that I'm using, my evangelism starts with awareness. Telling the awareness, let's help the Africans to understand, to come to the awareness first, that you are suffering an identity crisis, even though you don't know it. Even though you are a Harvard professor and you are rich and you are uh, making a lot of money and you are president of my country and you are speaking English in United Nations and all of that, even though you have all of that, you're, you're suffering from an identity crisis that has prevented us from achieving collective progress. Because you look at the Africans, at an individual level, we are quite successful. Barack Obama, Nelson Mandela, Gojo Konjiwala, Check out the Africans, Michael Jackson, all of those 
on an individual level, they are quite successful. That's to tell you that there's nothing wrong with our genes. But on a collective level, they are not successful. So on a genetic level, which empowers you with the ability to thrive as, as a human being, you are intact. But on a cultural level, what you need to thrive on that level are needs, which is the collection of your culture and all of that. So if what we are, what we are struggling with is a mimetic issue, is a mimetic disorder. So that is where we have problems. And that is why as a collective, as a country, no African country in the world, whether it's in Africa continent or in the Caribbean or in the Americas, any part of the world, no African country or community in the world is successful. Has, is even a first world country by the very standards of modern economics. So that tells you that there's some problem. So the, how is the solution? The solution starts from the self. It starts from the individual. My work is basically focused on advancing humanity by advancing individual consciousness. And in the African context, it is advancing the African spirit, the African identity, by advancing the consciousness of an Africa. So it begins at that level. That's the program that I do, identity authoring, is a process, is a coaching process that allows them African. So not only, it's not just engendering the African identity. No, you are on your own. You're going to create. First of all, you're going to understand where you're coming from. And you're going to create from your own experience, your own life, who you want to be. From your own experiences, from the rich heritage of your own culture. And there's a lot of cultural heritage. There's a lot of information and data that are still reserved in our culture, the ones that are still remaining. But you have to dig deeper. We have to now investigate to find out those things. And that's the process I take the individual to really understand, to delve deeper within you on, a, on an individual level and also from around you, your own culture, your own environment. That allows you to start creating an identity for yourself, which you will share with your immediate family, because that was where it begins. An immediate family. I have a specific course that borders on memory itself, the wealth of memories, that teaches us that memory in and of itself is wealth. And so you learn how to create memories and then hand them over how to transfer memories and how to actually build up memories. It's a, it's a very fantastic because a lot of people that have had the time to coach, had the opportunity to coach, have attested to this. You go through that process that you are able to be able to create your own memories, conserve and preserve them and then pass them on to your children. It's not just something that happens on an individual level and then, and, and it's not just a, uh, a theoretical stuff that we do, that I do for, that, that you go through just for you to uh, rekindle your African identity, but it's actually that affects, because it affects your finances, affects your relationship, affects your work, as every other, it affects your emotions, every other aspect of your life. And people who have gone through this have recorded financial success, recorded emotional success, success in their relationship, in their careers. Because you wanna be an exemplar of success for your children and for your culture and for your people before they can then take you as an ideal, as an icon that should be looked up on. How many icons do we have in Africa that have done revolutionary things, that, that have done something that, are, that is worth changing? You know, we talk about the likes of Einstein, we talk about the likes of uh, 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 Tesla. We talk about the likes of, you know, um, uh, William Shakespeare. These are people, iconic figures, even uh, uh, Leonardo da Vinci. How many of those kind of people do we have in the African culture? You know, the likes of Nelson Mandela and uh, Martin Luther King Jr. and all of those, you know, quite recent. We are actually fighting for us to be able to be able to create those things. We are fighting for identity. But for people who have actually push humanity forward. How many of them do we have in Africa? So this is a process that allows people, that allows you as an individual 
to begin that process and to start creating it. And Africans are doing quite a lot in a different level. So with this consciousness that is coming, I hope that you listen to us and you listening to this program, we'll be able to understand the, the importance of this in your life and then know how to really integrate it and then to start the journey. It is something that I went through on my own process and I'm still going through the process. And I believe and I hope and I pray that we get to the level that we are able to mass make this knowledge reach as many people as possible so that they can get the freedom that comes from this identity. Absolutely. I Absolutely. tell people at the final level, I tell people that what Nelson Mandela and Martin Luther King Jr. was able to achieve for the Africans was physical emancipation from slavery. But we are still lagging. It's the mental emancipation, which was what Bob Marley not really cried of. We are still lacking that, and that is this identity crisis. But my work and my coaching career and all of that, what I'm doing is focused on, is taking the next, take it to the last level, what Nelson Mandela and Martin Luther King Jr. actually did, taking it to the last level, which is the mental emancipation. And it begins with the African understanding who he is, what he is and who he is, because those are two different things. What he is, he talks about the essence of him, his ability to define himself and his origin and his culture. And then who he is, which is an interpretative process, an interpretation of his own identity and the meaning he's assigning to that person that he has defined. Because when you define what you are, who you are is assigning meaning to that person which is an interpretative process. And that is where you release the memory that releases the instructions within your nervous system to begin to act in your business, in your finances, in your uh, relationships and in your career that will now manifest that in your real life to turn into an authentic human being. So you wanna do that process of the definition and interpretation. That is what I hope and I wish and I pray for every African.